Hello, everybody. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and this is The Pick 6, the podcast by The Attractions Group, where we bring you the latest and top stories from the attractions and amusement industry. Now, Ryan, before we delve into this week's Pick 6, let me remind our listeners where they can tune in to The Attractions Group Podcast. You can catch us on your favorite podcast apps, like us on Facebook, follow us on X, and definitely subscribe to our YouTube. So, Ryan, what do we got to start us off? Story number one. We are starting where we were last week. Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri will debut an indoor roller coaster called Fire in the Hole on March 30th which I can't believe how soon that is. The $30 million ride will feature a 1,512-foot-long track, a climactic water splashdown, and three drops inside a climate-controlled building with 14 immersive scenes and digital and audio displays. So for more information on that, we talked extensively with Silver Dollar City last week, but man, I'm really looking forward to to Fire in the Hole. I think that's going to be so cool, don't you? I am super excited about this. I mean, it just looks so impressive. Uh, I've seen a lot of the different, you know, renderings leading up to when they started releasing actual photos and videos of it on their social channels and their website. Uh, You know, can't wait to experience it. Absolutely. What's next? Next, SeaWorld San Antonio has opened Catapult Falls, which it calls the world's first launched flume coaster. This intimate flume Ride features a launch into a hill, followed by a 55-foot vertical lift up to a 53-degree drop into another hill, which drops riders into Catapult Falls' final splashdown. It's a yeah. it's a fun-looking ride, Ryan. I agree. I, I like any launch ride, but I do like how they're being more innovative with what is launched. So this, and then you know the water coasters are launched with LSMs and stuff nowadays. So I think that's really neat, don't you? I do. It's, uh, you know, been a, one of the most anticipated attractions, you know, for a couple of years and they finally get to, uh, you know, open it and, you know, the initial reviews, uh, you know, just rare reviews right off the bat. Yep. Uh, I'm sure they have a winner on their hands. Okay. Next up, we're going to Walt Disney World. I've never been there before in the last week. <laughs> uh, officials with the Walt Disney Company revealed that new additions are coming to Star Tours the ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Orlando, Florida. Uh, this also includes Disneyland Paris in France and Disneyland Resort, typical Disneyland in Anaheim, California. The additions will be introduced on April 5th and include locations and characters from the Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian, Andor, and... Oh, gosh. You're going to have me try to pronounce I'm not a Star Wars guy. Ahsoka? You think that's how it's pronounced? Is that the name of the show? It's, yeah, I'm not a Star Wars fan either, but I would go either uh, Soka or Osaka, one of the two. Yeah, uh, that's our. Now let it, you know, I'm sure you'll let us know if we're wrong. Here. Yeah, I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments. So I'm not going to make a comment about making a comment in the comments. But uh, yeah, so I, I I actually rode Star Tours within the last seven days or so. Um, it's interesting how well it holds up, but at the same time, it's so uninspiring because you have to compare it to Rise of the Resistance, which is one of the most impressive rides ever made, which is a five minute walk away from it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's hard to measure up to that, but, uh, going to be introduced April 5th, which is just around the corner. That's right. So for those who don't know, star tours is, uh, the original star Wars ride from probably the nineties at Hollywood studios. (laughs) It is not in galaxy's edge. Uh, but essentially it is a, a video motion simulator, but of course it has a Disney touch to it where it has a live, uh, C3PO, uh, steering the ship and turning around and interacting with the guests and so on. So, um, not too terribly difficult to add videos to this, but they do it quite a bit. So I think that's kind of impressive. All right, moving right along. Dollywood's 39th season begins on Friday with a season pass preview, opens to everyone on Saturday. Now their calendar spans an impressive 281 days. That's 23 days longer than the previous year and 44 more days than 2022. You know, I'm excited, Ryan, to make the most of my season pass and savor all that Dollywood has in store. And they've got a lot this year. Yeah, they most certainly do. Uh, Breaking news on that is that... uh... Lightning Rod, 
the the new version of Lightning Rod with the high speed chain lift hill is anticipated to open with the park this coming weekend for those of you who are listening. So uh, if anybody that's listening to this after getting to ride the new Lightning Rod, we'd love to hear in the comments or on our X, which is attractions underscore GRP, as to what you think about it and how it affects the ride experience. But um, uh, the the new Dolly Parton experience will open what later in the spring, I think they said. So that's not later gonna, in the spring. That's not going to open with the park, but still a lot to look forward to between um, you know the Dolly Parton experience, Lightning Rod, a bunch of new shows, as well as their whole slew of new festivals. Uh, festivals different uh you know food and treats uh just a lot going on there yeah absolutely uh, dollywood is one of those parks where it never gets old there's always something interesting and you know they've been kicking it for 39 years now you know what's notable though is what other parks out there you know they're cutting back on their calendars and you see dollywood they're adding not just more days but they've also extended you know some of the park operating hours on you know where before they might have closed at six you know, now they're closing, you know, later eight, nine. So uh, just a lot more uh, time and just a great value. I agree. And and you can make a lot of arguments as to why this is. Uh, I think part of it is that some parks see that opening is a burden. They see that as something that costs money. While uh, Dollywood is very evident in how they embrace their guests. And in turn, you know, the guests continue to come and they continue to spend money and so on. So um hats off to dollywood uh I, I, I they'll be year round before you know it i'm i'm calling it now within two years well let's put money on it <laughs> that's probably the goal and i will be there this weekend that's awesome okay next one so holiday world the legend parking lot in santa claus indiana will be a prime spot to view the april 8th solar eclipse the gates will open at 10 a.m central time that is uh, with a partial eclipse starting around 12.47 p.m. The total eclipse begins at 2.04 p.m., lasting about two minutes. Complimentary solar eclipse glasses provided at a first-come, first-served basis for safety. Uh, enjoy food trucks, family-friendly music for a festive atmosphere. Now, one thing that I did notice about this is uh, when it was being shared out, their messaging was so solid. Um, you know, we had, was it Leah Cook on the, on the show? Mm -hmm. Uh, she did such a good job of, hey, we're doing this. This is our event. Oh, by the way, we open on this date, and this is where you get season passes, and we're hiring. All that messaging got out, so that was so, so good. So so well done. Yeah, it should be a perfect spot uh, to experience the solar eclipse. Absolutely. You know, and we have, we love Holiday World, and it's cool that the, uh, there's two different parks. You know, them and, you know, another park up north are also – doing solar eclipse things so that's pretty neat all right what's next kennywood recently posted a photo showcasing the completion of track renovations on its iconic 96 year old racer roller coaster it's one of my favorites the in-house team at kennywood is replacing and retracking both lift hills amounting to over 1,000 feet of lumber this year the left hill side has been successfully addressed with plans to tackle the right hill in the upcoming year another park that i'm looking forward to making the most of my season pass yeah absolutely you know it's been a while since i've ridden the racer uh, over over a decade actually but uh i think the term is mobius is uh, mobius, so right. you leave the station on one side and you come back on the other th side which is a mine trip but yeah great ride kennywood has a ton of old wooden coasters that are just plain fun They're, they just really are you got that the thunderbolt jackrabbit uh you know, just a, it's an old school, you know, charm to it. Just a great place to visit. I agree. So, Don, let's move on to the listener question. This one's from Daniel Stadnick. Uh, and he says, it seems like every year or so we hear an announcement of another major uh, theme park being built. But most of them never come to fruition. Do you think American Heartland in Oklahoma will fare any better? Don? Is it going to happen? I do. Uh, yeah, I, I do. I think this is going to happen. They've broke ground on it in the fall. Uh, the people that they have involved with it, you know, they have deep pockets. They've got around 30, you know, former Disney employees involved with this project. Uh, you know, about 20 Imagineers that worked at Disney, you know, involved. Uh, you know, it looks exciting, you know, the renderings, you know, the plans they have for this. Uh, this is one that I do think will happen. Now, will it? hit the 2026 
you know, years, the, the goal to open it, maybe phase one or phase two of it. I don't think it'll be the completion of it by that time. But I, I do think that uh, this is when we're going to see. What about you, Ryan? Um, it's very simple with these things. Uh, I completely agree. Anytime we hear about a park being announced, my first uh, instinct is skepticism, um, which I believe yours is too. Uh, so all you have to do, it's very simple. You look at it and you see if they've got funding. If they have funding, maybe. If they don't, it's never going to happen. Because I can't tell you how many times it's been like, um, yeah, we, we want to build this this park. Remember the, the, the park that they were going to build in columbus ohio that was going to be bigger than disney world and um it, so many times you read into it and it's like they're just seeking 50 million dollars from the local municipality that has six thousand people in it you know like i i don't know where they get off doing it because it seems like it, they just waste their own money and i i guess if you throw enough against the wall you're eventually going to get something to stick but um as don said you know once they start breaking ground and stuff it becomes yeah, real. And, and they've, like I said, they've got, uh, you know, some notable people involved with it. So I do think we'll see this. I think it's a great location, you know, Oklahoma, you know, where they're, they're going to be at. Uh, I think it's going to be a destination place if it, you know, everything is what they said it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, it'll be very interesting. And, um, you know, it could work in, uh, in, in tandem with, uh, the universal park in Texas. I'm not sure how far apart they are. But if they're within a few hours, that might be a, a good coaster trip, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, that's very cool. Um, like I said, always uh, always chase the money. Where's the money? Ask that with every question you're ever asked, and you can yeah, find that's out. always the first. You're right. First question, you know, how deep are their pockets? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Hey, that's another pick six. Make sure that you follow us on all your favorite podcast apps: Apple, Google, Spotify. You know the drill. Um, like us on YouTube, uh, subscribe on YouTube, sorry. Uh, smash that like button. Um, we'd love to hear you on social media at attractions underscore GRP. But we'll see you next week, everybody, with another super exciting episode of the Attractions Group Podcast. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs>